I think a lot of the reasons that women have, women may have such a hard time during menopause, it's just you don't know what hit you. You just, yeah, you're not all. prepared for yeah. it. And it feels like somebody just pulled the rug out of you and yes. you feel blindsided right. by your body and let down by your doctors and you just don't know what to do or how to take care of yourself. So I think it's really important to, first of all, understand the science and be familiar mm -hmm. with the science and also yeah. the terminology, if I may, and then look at solutions, right? What are, what are all the things that can make this transition better and gentler and easier and what kind of solutions would work for you as an individual? Mm -hmm. And there's no right or wrong answer, right? So I'm also not pro HRT. I am pro mm -hmm. solutions and I'm most mm. certainly anti-suffering. Right? There's no um, need to so suffer. Well yes, it's a long transition. It can take a long time. So I would say, let's look at all the solutions. Maybe something will work now and then we'll change to something else yeah. later. But let's just be informed about all the things that can actually work and then come up with a plan that works for you. And for me, again, because I am a scientist, it's important to share the right words with women. Mm -hmm. Because what, I'm, what I noticed coming into this field a little bit from the back door in a way is that menopause is really portrayed as a medical catastrophe. Mm. Like you look, you open a textbook, an, a medical textbook, and menopause in Western medicine is defined as a state of estrogen deficiency mm. caused by ovarian failure. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> how is that going to make you feel... Oh, great. You know, that's yeah. me. <laughs> it's yeah. terrible. And, and then there are experts or other people who are like, well, no, 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 no. Let's take a step back. This is just a scientific definition. It's based on mice. Let's just consider menopause as part of the natural aging process. And that's also being a little bit out of touch with reality. There's nothing that feels Agreed. natural about Agreed. it and that feels like you should just kind of ride the wave and do nothing because it's just Agreed. natural and so the correct definition of menopause is a neuroendocrine state or a neuroendocrine transition where your body where your brain and your ovaries and your hormonal system are changing at the same time so this is a biologically programmed event mm -hmm. which needs to happen however is not part of chronological aging it's endocrine aging, which is different. Mm -hmm. It's its yes. own set of pros and cons, where the cons are obvious. There are symptoms, there's the hot flashes, there's the brain fog, but there's also pros. And the pros is that yeah. this, is, this is needed for you to transition to a different phase of your life where you have just a, just a completely different biology, right? Yes. So let's yes. use this terminology. Menopause is not a disease. We do not need to treat it as such because it's not a disease. You don't have to necessarily medicate it unless you find relief in prescription medications, which is great. If you do, wonderful. Yeah. But let's let's not start with the mindset. This is something that's making you sick. Yeah. Oh, right. Thank because you for it's that. very thank disempowering. I yeah. think. Agreed. Mm. Yeah. And it's not and saying you shouldn't use medications. Right. It's more just saying, let's stay calm, you know, because it's not making you sick. We're not dying. Yeah. But let's look at solutions. Yeah. I think it's a better and way. And do you to... think, do you think, I love that because I think one of the, one of the things that I've been really trying to emphasize to my followers is there's not one solution. There's your solution. Yes. And so you've got to f find your rhythm with these changes that are going on in your brain and, and your body as you go through the menopausal experience. And I think one of the places we start disserving women is when we're like, everybody needs to put a patch on. Yeah. Everybody needs to do bioidenticals. And then a woman tries it and all of a sudden maybe she gains, you know, 20 pounds or <laughs> another woman tries it and she becomes suicidal. Like we have to, I think the, the way, what you just said was so powerful. And then I feel like we need to take it even deeper and say, and your goal as you go through this experience is to find your menopausal toolbox. And mm -hmm. you might sometimes need to pull out a patch and other times you may need to get rid of the alcohol. 
It's like there mm. has to be a set of tools that you're given, and then you need to learn how to use those tools as you go through the experience. Yes, and in the end, you do you. You know, you are the expert when it comes to your health and your well-being. And it's yes. wonderful to know what things have helped other women. That's obviously a wonderful starting point. But Agreed. in the end, unfortunately, for menopause, it's a little bit trial and error. And I think yeah, part right. of the reason that this is the case is that we do not have an integrative framework for menopause. Yeah. If you think about it, you're going through menopause and you're experiencing the hot flashes and you're experiencing the brain fog and maybe you can't sleep at night. Who do you go to? You go to an yeah. OB-GYN, an OB-GYN right. specialist. Wonderful, but they don't do brains. Right. They're not yes. trained. I mean, not, it's not a critique in any way, shape or form. They're I wonderful specialists, yeah. but they're not trained to manage brain health. They're not yeah. trained. They're not, they don't specialize in the brain. And it's yeah. really, I think, a missed opportunity. The brain specialists are not involved in a woman's yes. medical checkup when it comes to menopause care. Because yeah. we do have something to bring. I, I promise we bring a lot to the table. We can really support women through this transition and it's wonderful to work with our colleagues in OBGYN. Yeah. So that, and also preventative cardiology and metabolic yeah. health and sleep health. Everybody. It would be yeah. wonderful to have a more integrative approach with all different specialists that are able to weigh in as needed Ugh. to address dream. a different point. Yeah, it's a dream. We do this actually, Walconam Medicine where mm -hmm. we, we collaborate with our colleagues in ob also ob surgery, because Amazing. surgical menopause is a little bit harder on the body, or can yep. be harder on the body and the brain. We work with our colleagues who specialize in breast cancer and reproductive cancer. So they were all together. And what they do is that they send their patients to us for cognitive testing when necessary, brain imaging, mm -hmm. and all this evaluations that we do for cognitive health and brain health. And mm -hmm. the other way around, our patients, once we figure out, okay, these problems you're having are much more likely to be menopause than Alzheimer's disease, for example, let's go talk to our colleagues in OBGYN and see what they recommend for a treatment plan. And then let's try yeah. everything together. So I think this, this is so beautiful. I wish yes. everybody operated like that. What do you think, where do you think lifestyle fits into this? Like it, how important is your lifestyle as you're going through, mm. I'm going to start calling it the pruning process. I feel like <laughs> instead of called perimenopause, it should be called the brain, the brain pruning process. Yes. And I think it's interesting that, that we define a brain process based on the ovaries, right? We, right. we completely disconnect we don't acknowledge the fact that the brain is involved in menopause. Everything is always based right. on the function of the ovaries, which I think is confusing so to a lot of patients as well, because yeah. they don't really match your experience. But anyway, yeah. I think lifestyle is very important. It's really your foundation and is your starting point for health. Mm -hmm. And the healthier you are as you go through menopause, the less likely you are to have severe symptoms or discomfort. And of Agreed. course, it's not a 100% correlation, but there seems mm -hmm. to be an impact. Things like regular physical activity, a healthy yep. diet or a balanced diet, yep. stress reduction, sleep hygiene, avoiding toxins, regular medical yep. checkups. Those are all things that, that just support health overall and do yeah. support hormonal health as well. So they are, I think they're very important. You know, if I go back to the grandmother hypothesis, one of the things I was thinking about when you were talking about the purpose of the grandmother in mm. back in the primal days, how if they didn't come back with a kill, then they had to take what they had forged close by to the cave, and that was probably plant-based. Yeah. So if you, if you yeah. look at what the diet for the perimenopause, menopausal woman, mm. I would think it was probably a mixture of definitely some animal meat, but you didn't have access to that all the time. So right. it also is probably very much a plant-based diet. And what I've seen, as much as there's incredible conversation around protein right now and the, the need for more protein, which I agree with, I also think equally for the menopausal woman is the need for plants. 
because it just off the grandmother hypothesis, sometimes grandma had to go get the plants and bring it back. Right. And yeah. that's what we all, and, and maybe it's not just menopause, maybe it's all ages of, of female reproductive cycling. Yeah. I would say then most of the research shows that a plant forward diet mm. seems to be really beneficial for women's health overall. I love that. Which yeah. is a flexible diet and really is focused on getting the nutrients in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you can get a lot yeah. of good nutrients from eating plants. And then, like you said, you know, meat and fish and higher protein sources can be helpful as well. But it's also yeah. good to know that you can get a lot of nutrients from eating plants because really the strongest correlations I have seen are with fiber and women's health. Yeah. I'm talking hormonal health and women's health. It's really fiber. And you were talking about balancing your yeah. microbiome before. Yep. Uh, antioxidants seem to be super important. Why? Because the brain and the ovaries are extremely metabolically active organs. And the more metabolically active you are, the more sensitive you are to free radicals and oxidative stress. They are yep. very damaging to cells. And the only yes. way to reduce oxidative stress is by importing antioxidant nutrients from your diet. Yeah. So those yeah. have to happen. And also, you know, for the microbiome, something that was really interesting to me is how a part of the, micro of the microbiome is called the estrobolum. Yes, I love this part. This is my favorite part. Tell me what you know about it. It's so cute. I mean, even just the term it's is so cute. cute. I agree. So there's a collection of bacteria and, and microorganisms in the microbiome that are part of the estrobolum. And this is this sector of the microbial population that is very specifically involved in regulating estrogen levels by deciding whether the estrogen needs to be expelled from the body, mm. be it out or not, or needs to be reintegrated in the circulation. And the way, so it's important to have a healthy estrobolum to make yes. sure that your estrogen levels are in part balanced. They're not the only determinant, they're still being studied, but they do seem to play a role. Now, how do you keep them healthy? By consuming a plant-rich diet that right. includes a lot of fiber, oligosaccharides, antioxidant nutrients, prebiotics, probiotics. So that's another reason to consume yeah. more Makes plants. Sense. You know, like we were saying before, I'm not pro HRT. I'm not pro any specific diet. I am pro the diet yes. that works for you, that is sustainable Thank for you. you. As long as it's healthy and really is well-rounded, includes a diversity yeah. of plant-based foods, because those are good for health. It's good to have diversity yeah. when it comes to the phytochemicals and phytonutrients. And that is sustainable so that there's no, okay, I'm vegan for three weeks and then I'm going to go keto because I gain weight or the other right. way around. Or that is much more disruptive to, to keep switching diets or keep, you know, the yo-yo dieting or yes, sudden agreed. changes in, in anything is confusing to your body. Yes. So I think yeah. whatever diet is, is sustainable for you that is high, it's a nutrient dense diet. Yeah. I'll support you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know what? I, you, you're the first person I've talked to that has a very similar approach to diet that I oh, do. Oh, good. Because I feel like there's a lot of good in all the conversations we're having mm -hmm. around diet right now. Yeah. The only one I'm opposed to is the standard Western diet that's right. packed with chemicals and okay. inflammatory oils. Yeah. So then you have to figure out what diet works for best for you. And we, when we become dogmatic, and we're like, you eat this way, you don't eat this way. Now I feel like we've lost our way. We need to look at all the different diets. Maybe keto's better for you. Maybe it's not. Maybe vegan's better for you. Maybe you need to do the carnivore diet for a few weeks. I mean, let's look at all of them and like see where they may fit and you figure out what works best for you. So I, I just I think we need to take a more holistic approach to so. food than, than we're doing right now. Yes. So I think also, yeah. I mean, honestly, in the end, if you're able to just eliminate processed foods from your diet, yeah. at yeah. that point, whatever diet you're on is a matter of optimization. Yes. Yes. But the base right. is solid. 
Yeah. So if there's Agreed. one recommendation that we could give to people, it's really just try to stay away from processed foods, highly processed foods, especially fast food, packaged foods with a ton of preservatives. Once those are yes. out of the diet, then, you know, you're basically halfway through, if not more than that. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. 